Konnichiwa Minasan. Hi everybody. This is Leo from Inside Leo's Mind. So here's a video I want to make. I want to praise Has well, Mattel for making the best Jurassic Park dinosaur, Jurassic Park toys ever made. The, such as this, the recent Giga, Stop and Strike Giganotosaurus figure they they had to offer in the retail marketing and wherever you buy it from. So here's my boxed um, here's my boxed Giganotosaurus I just got for free from someone from a from a from an awesome friend of my of me and my parents my me and my mom so it was a it was a free it was a gift I got it for free and here's my loose um, sample of the Giganotosaurus the same figure except that it's one's in the box and one this is a loose sample I can use to reenact toy movies with. And here's my box Giganotosaurus I'm going to use for to preserve the value and to to gather autographs from filmmakers and actresses who were actors that worked on these movies, especially Jurassic World Dominion. Okay, this is also going to be a review too. So, so I'm going to say let me talk about Giganotosaurus. So Giganotosaurus is a dinosaur that existed in the in the early and mid Cretaceous period, found in Argentina. It was supposed to be a large predator, which is supposed to be the predecessor of T-Rex, but larger. Okay, Giganotosaurus only appeared in, when it comes to pop culture or in Jurassic Park-wise. Okay, let's talk about J, the Jurassic series-wise. It was in Jurassic Park um, Warpath, for which is a PS1 game. Then it was in Jurassic Park um, Operation Genesis, I suppose. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um... It was okay in the fourth movie, which was which is now called Jurassic World. It was originally going to have it was originally going to have this in it, but they changed it to Indominus Rex, which is a fictitious hybrid. So the Indominus Rex was a hybrid that has a hybrid of Indominus Rex mixed with T Rex, Carnotaurus, T Rex, and Therizinosaurus put together. So I'm very happy that the filmmakers brought the Giganotosaurus to the to the world of Jurassic Park. Or in Jurassic World, which I really love. Which, this is something that they, they should have done in the beginning. I'm glad they did it. The design, the overall design of this beast is just incredible. So that even as a toy form, Mattel, they nailed it. Mattel has nailed it. Like I love the sculpt. The sculpt is is really is really good. It's really cool. Like look, you know how Canter toys like their red T Rex. They're basically the same length as my arm. I love dinosaurs that have the same length as my arm because it it creates it creates the appearance that it's a large animal, and you can compare. You can do a small to do size comparison. Bring out a small dinosaur or human character, so that way you can he can she can he can eat he can devour his prey like this, and it does the thrashing action. Which is the best feature? I know some people don't like the the wob how wobbly it is, but that's forgivable. If you want to display, you can just put put it like you know, face him sideways like this, and then it'll look like it's it's looking looking in a different direction. The t I know I know is that the tail is has some kind of move has some kind of joints here, but that doesn't bother me. Not at all. As for the availability and, and sorry, not availability. As for the offering, which for for retail for retail stores, okay, I'm gonna say that this is the way. This is, has Mattel did an excellent job making this dinosaur come to life in in toy form. Because okay, let me show you the box. Producing it in a packaging like this is very eye popping. You can see. It has Rexy here, the T-Rex right there, as the the traditional Jurassic Park T-Rex logo. Although, I know in Jurassic Park three they swapped it with a Spinosaurus. Well, the Spinosaurus only appeared in Jurassic Park three, so I think the reason why they changed it back to a T-Rex logo because that's part that's basically part of the series. I know Jack Horner's during Jack Horner said that he want the Spinosaurus to be in Jurassic Park three. To replace the T-Rex because they thought it was a large predator, 
we now know that Spinosaurus is a is aquatic fish eater and they don't have the strongest bite force like like those of a T-Rex. Giganotosaurus has a different bite force. And like and like the dinosaur itself, the bo the box has the same length as my deer, which is pretty cool. It's the same it's a massive box, kind of like the same size as the Kenner Red Rex figure from 1993 along with its throwback counterpart. Okay, when you get this at the store, like whether it's Target, Walmart, it comes out on a big box. Okay, the reason why this is so good is because, because it creates a lot of money this way. So this is the way how you package a figure. This is how you make money this way. If you make your dinosaur look incredible and it's based off of off its film counterpart, it's more likely that collectors or even some kids may want this. And look, Mattel did wonderful. They got an A plus on this thing. And that went perfectly well. Look, it's a big, look, it's a big theropod with a huge thin like hump on its back, crest on its head, it has these spikes. Look how dragon-like this is. Even though it's not accurate to the real dinosaur, but hey, it's worth it. What Mattel did and getting it's worth it. Even though, okay, if you want to get a present for someone or or you want to buy it for yourself or your collection. Yes. You see, creating something like this does make money. So this is how you, this is the, the correct way. I'm really happy with this. So way to go, Mattel. Wait, so bravo, Mattel. Bravo. This is a major improvement over, over, Hasbro's 2015 and Dominus Rex, which didn't do well because it had balancing issues. The, the Stomp and Strike had, had have fragile, breakable skin. But this, okay. The plastic, well, I have nothing to say about the plastic, so just be, just, I'm going to say that it would be very, be, please be gentle with this. And please don't play too rough because you may accidentally break it or something. So, so for my figures, I don't really, I use it for toy movies, but not like how kids play with them. So I'm using it as a, as a, I put it up on my shelf or my, on my bookcase or my showcase just for a display piece. So Mattel, maybe in the future, Mattel can make another Giganotosaurus without this stomp and screw. Maybe they can remake it by doing the thrashing action, like they just like the thra just like the Lost World Jurassic Park Thrasher T Rex from nineteen ninety seven. Maybe they'll do that again. I love tail thrashing actions. It's the best feature. Oh, this goes. This gets back to to Giganotosaurus and pop culture. So Jurassic World Dominion isn't the only thing that has. Giganotosaurus. There's also The Fifth Land Before Time, Primeval, a documentary called Dinosaurs, Giants of Patagonia, the BBC Chase by Dinosaurs with Matthew, sorry, uh, Nigel Marvin, and there's one in Journey to the Center of the Earth, although in, in this case, it doesn't look like a Giga. It looks more like a T-Rex. Anyway, to the conclusion, I'll say This is wonderful. This is this figure is wonderful. And Mattel did an excellent job. So I like to see more stuff like more dinosaurs in the future. And these and this is a this is the be, the best money maker ever. And this is how you do it. So imagine okay, to make things more cooler, like let's say instead of Rexy right there, you replaced replaced her with the Giganotosaurus, and replace the swap the T Rex logo with the Giganotosaurus skeleton logo. That'll make it more eye popping that way. So, so Bravo Mattel, Bravo Mattel. I'm going to say enough said and I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, okay my little friend, okay my little friend. Say goodbye.